Overdrive AF, the official podcast of Overdrive Fitness. My name is Gina Marie Gerzon, and I am joined by the talented, the handsome, the very Asian Pacific Islander, Teddy Gerzon. That was an amazing intro. I've never felt so loved before. But on Ha, nice. So we're going to start off with you today, right, Boo? Yeah, so, um, you know, we're, um, last, last week we spoke about, as far as sports performance, we spoke about, um, you know, uh, conditioning and stuff like that. So I believe that was last week. Am I you're drawing a blank right now? Yes. Don't bastardize conditioning? <laughs> yeah, I guess all our days have just right. blended into one blur. But, um, you know, going on with the theme of, like, you know, what you can do as an athlete to get better on your own. Uh, one thing I'd like to speak about today, at least, would be to speak about uh, an exercise called the split squat iso hold. So as far as this week, the week of January 13th, that'll be um, the Movement Monday exercise. We're rebooting that uh, in our social media accounts. So the split squat iso hold, we, we've shown and featured the split squat ISO, but as a barbell movement, um, I believe is in May, uh, yeah, 2017 or 2018, whatever it was. But um, this particular version of it, this variation of it, is um, more of just a simple body weight exercise that anyone can do. So it really doesn't require anything with it, the exception of attention to detail. All right, so. Um, Isometrics are a great way to basically remodel tissue, reprogram the, the Golgi tendon organs. And uh, for those of you who don't know, the Golgi tendon organs, the GTO, um, they are basically the brains inside the muscles. So they receive the signals from the brain, and, they, and then they get that command basically from the brain to um, give the order to the muscle to tell it whether or not to contract or relax so um, it also is the another way to look at the Golgi tendon organ is basically like uh, an overprotective mother of the muscle in the sense that if it thinks the muscle is about to go through too much of a contraction or let's say too fast or whatever it may be it'll just be like whoa chill the fuck out calm your tits and let's bring it back a little bit. So for instance, uh, you know, let's say you're, you're sprinting and you're about to, your Golgi tendon organs might think that your hamstring is about to, to contract too fast. It may actually just be like, it'll, it'll, it'll cause the muscle like maybe lock up and be like, hey, 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 what the hell are you doing here? Like, we cannot lengthen to that length that you're, you're calling me on to do, right? So one thing that you can do is you can put yourself in a long duration isometric. Uh, this type of, uh, or this method at least, was made famous uh, early 2000s by Jay Schrader. Shout out Jay Schrader. And uh, Adam Archuleta, and a little sidebar, I don't know if anybody listening knows who Adam Archuleta is, but he's basically um, this safety, I think actually he played linebacker in college, but wasn't recruited out of high school, wasn't very talented coming out of high school, um, trained with this guy, and next thing you know, he uh, going into the NFL Combine he had ridiculous numbers at the Combine. I mean, signed lucrative contracts in the NFL just because he had an impressive Combine. But bringing it back, uh, long duration ISOs were made famous by his trainer, Jay Schrader. Um, no one really knows exactly what he did with them. This, it's all just been hearsay, but, um, you know, like I said, isometrics are a great way of of getting better at holding each position. So in the sense of um, the exercise I'm speaking about today, which is the, our topic, the split squat iso hold, uh, for all you athletes out there that may, be, may not be able to you know, get to a gym or train with a trainer, um, try this exercise. So what you're gonna do basically is like, think of a lunge, right? Uh, you have your hands on your hips, you're doing a walking lunge, you're going to just step forward, right? Well, in this case, you're in a split stance. So you have one foot forward, one foot back. Let's say your left foot forward, your right foot's back, right? Your feet are at hip width. They're not wider than your hips. They're not in a straight line. 
Okay, your both your to both your toes are forward. Now, what you want to do is not put yourself in too long of a position for this. So you don't want to feel like you're doing a split, but you are in what is a split stance, right? When you drop down and hold it, you want to keep your front foot, in this case your left foot, um, flat on the ground with your knee traveling over the toe. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't have your knee travel over the toe. That's bad, right? I don't know. Yeah, you Let's might. Let's talk about it. Let's talk. Oh, do we have time to talk about that? I think we do have time to talk about it. Oh, my God. Knees over the toes are bad, right? Unless, of course, you're getting your ass off the toilet, and then what? I guess it's bad to shit then, too. Kind of like arching your back in the bench press. No. Yeah, or eating carbs. Oh, shit. We'll get back to that later. But, um, so, you have your front foot completely flat. Toes are straight forward. Your rear foot is on the ball of the foot and the toe with the heel elevated, okay? Once you drop down, that front knee is traveling over the toe, but not too far, all right? Um, you, could, you don't want your foot so far back that your heel has to come up over your front foot, but it should be enough to where we force that dorsiflexion. So in the sense that the knee is traveling over the toe and the toe of the front foot isn't pointed down with your, with your um, ankle extended, it's actually pulled up with the toe going towards the knee, all right, going up towards the shin. Um, you're going to drop down and hold it. So what I like to do is just like a, when I give uh, tips to people that, you know, we'll have athletes in here be like, what can I do every day to make sure I get faster? Well, you know, going back to an older episode we did on why I hate Ugg slippers, you know, a lot of athletes today, their ankles are all fucked up, all fucked up. So here's one thing you can do, right? You're forcing your body into this, this uh, dorsiflexion. You don't have any external load on your body with the exception of the body weight that's already on your skeletal, skeletal structure, all right? Um, your rear knee is going to be hovering over the ground, not touching the ground, right? You're not kneeling, okay? You have, before you even gotten down into position, you have already set your brace. So you're breathing circumferentially. Definitely said that super Asian and mumbled all my words together, but we're gonna keep it rolling, okay? Um, People like watching it too, so just, you know, over enunciate. Circumferentially. <laughs> Holy shit, he got that right. Um, yeah, and you're, you know, you're breathing 360 degrees through your stomach, all right? Um, that'll set your ribs in a good position to get down and your hips in a good position um, to operate, all right? And just set a clock for three minutes, all right? Three minutes. It's going to be the longest three minutes of your life, okay? But I'm kidding. That's disgusting. Um, no, it's not. Uh, so once you're in that position... Just hold it, right? Now, I don't ever expect anybody to hold this position for three minutes, but the goal is to see basically how many uh, sets you can hold that, how many times you can hold that position within the three minutes. So, so let's say clock's running. It's going, it's just counting up towards three, three minutes, right? Uh, the first time you attempt the exercise, you last 20 seconds. Gather yourself, the clock's still running. And then you do it for another 15, gather yourself because it broke down again the clock's still running you do that over and over and over until it hits three minutes every day you do this or even if you do it every other day it's just body weight so it's not like you're taxing the central nervous system too much but every time you do it you're not only improving uh and getting stronger but you're reprogramming that skeletal tissue i mean that that muscular tissue you're reprogramming the gold gold tendon origin organs and what I shouldn't say, reprogramming uh, muscle tissue, you're remodeling it, right? So now it is getting used to um, be, uh, lengthening and contracting in a certain position. So a lot of people think an ISO is just, you know, you're just standing still, you're not doing anything. Well, what's really going on is you're holding in that position, but even though from the naked eye your body isn't moving, there are thousands of contractions that's going on in such a short amount of time, you know, within seconds, minutes, whatever it may be. Um, and those muscles, they're, they're contracting, relax, contract, relax, contract, relax, over and over and over and over and over again to the point where all of a sudden that overprotective mother, the GTO, the Golgi tendon organ, is like, whoa, you know what? This muscle can handle this. We're just going to let this ride out, you know? It's kind of like, 
you know, when, when your mother lets you out past your curfew for the first time and you actually came home sober. And she was like, wow, you know what? My son might be a little bit responsible. I wasn't sober. So, um, yeah, uh, but athletes, you want to give something a shot to get faster, do the split squat iso hold. Try it for three minutes. Try it three times in one week, right? Uh, if you try it every day, fine. I mean, hey, at least it's only six minutes of your life, okay? Why am I choosing this exercise for you to start with? Not only will it improve your ankle mobility, uh, it'll improve your strength in that acceleration position, but acceleration is the first phase of sprinting, right? So almost every athlete listening to this and watching this on YouTube plays a team sport or even a sport in which your first step is the most important step and your first step is never out of a top speed phase, it's always into an acceleration phase because you're starting from literally nothing and trying to hit a very explosive speed in a short amount of time. So that's all I have to say for this week. Try the split squat iso hold. Uh, check us out on our Instagram account, at ODFitnessNY, and then even my personal one, uh, at Teddy underscore Overdrive. And then I'm sure Gina will share it on hers too, Gina at Gina underscore Overdrive. And uh, we'll be posting this exercise video on those accounts um, when we're today, actually. We're filming this and recording this today, January 13th. But by the time you guys hear it, and it'll be the 14th, um, you know, you'll see it up. It'll, we won't take it down, all right? And uh, just give it a shot. Let us know what you think about it. And uh, now we are going to talk about... Why women are so afraid of carbs. Why are women so afraid of carbs? I don't know. Oh my god, I gotta get fat. I can't eat carbs. Carbs are gonna make me bulky. I don't wanna get big. I need I to see carbs, you know, my thigh fat. gap. Carbs will eradicate my oh thigh boy. gap. Oh boy, if you ladies knew what I ate on a daily basis, and I'm tiny. And no, it's not just because my mama is small. All right, so why are you ladies so afraid of carbs? Carbs are the principal source of fuel and energy in the body. They are crucial to virtually every system in our bodies. I'm not gonna get too scientific and too crazy, but I wanna get to the point here. Um, there are two types of carbs, right? Simple and complex. And all, co and all carbs are digested into <gasps> simple sugars. Oh, sugar's bad. Sugars. Oh my God, everything turns into sugar, Gina. I can't eat carbs. I've heard that so many times. Should we talk about big sugar and oh, how they have a God. conspiracy theory to make us all fat and kill us? All carbs are digested into what we would consider simple sugars in the body before they're absorbed. So it doesn't matter if it's a spoonful of sugar in your coffee, in your 32 ounce coffee with lots of cream and lots of sugar, or that cup of oats that you have, that high fiber, cook them 10 minutes, let them soak overnight oatmeal or oats that you have for your breakfast every morning. All right, that rate of digestion and absorption is dependent upon what surrounds that food, that carbohydrate. So your protein, your fat, your vegetables, your high fiber foods, so whatever that is. All right, and we spoke a little bit about that on the last episode last podcast right protein carbs and fats are you just eating a pack of twizzlers are you eating six donuts are you jamming the popcorn in your face while you're watching netflix think about the choices that you're making first ladies and gentlemen all right what are we talking about when we're talking about carbohydrates being that it's the principal source of fuel and energy in the body, that it's so crucial to every system, every system. We're talking about oats, oatmeal, high, uh, high fiber or whole grain cereals, potatoes, sweet potato, rice, white, brown, black, red, wild, technically that's a seed, um, but it's still considered a carbohydrate. 
uh, various fruits, all different kinds. Yes, bananas too. Oh my God, there's sugar in bananas. There's bananas sugar in make everything. you fat. There, everything turns to that simple sugar. I'm gonna repeat it, right? Everybody heard that one. Whole grain or sprouted breads, that kind of stuff. We're talking about all those different types of quote unquote carbohydrates. All right? We wanna be mindful when we're eating these things. Are you getting your carbs, quote unquote carbohydrates, from, again, that big bucket of popcorn? Where are you getting your carbs from? Are you going to the candy machine in the middle of work and chowing down? Get him, Titan. And she's Tucker's getting he's pissed, pissed about, about carbs. It. He's pissed about it because he gets his carbs in. Right, Titan? Titan, come here. So what kind of carbs are we talking about? Are you standing at the vending machine trying to figure out, oh, well, what do I got? I got the Twizzlers. I got the Skittles. I got the popcorn. I got, oh, what else do I got there? Hmm, that kettle, that uh, 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 candy roasted, what, whatever it is. Or are we talking about, hmm, you know what? There's a bowl of fruit in the fridge that I cut up for myself. I'm going to eat that. I have my sprouted grain bread. I'm going to throw some, um, some turkey and a slice of cheese on that with maybe a little bit of avocado. That sounds delicious. What are we talking about, guys? We want to think about our choices. Be really mindful of those things. Our carb requirements, too. Okay, look. We're all different. Everybody's different. Even twins are different, okay? Our individual carb requirements will depend on our goals. What are you trying to do? Fat loss? Muscle gain? Are you trying to maintain? Our genetics? Our body type? Our, do we have any medical conditions? And again, are these medical conditions brought on by your lifestyle over the years or what you have or haven't done? Um, we have to think about those things too. Carb sources, right? So we have refined and minimally processed, so our, more of our whole foods. So what, what uh, our carb requirements will depend on, Titan, I'm talking about some important stuff here. All right, so refined like your spoonful of sugar, refined like your candy in the vending machine, refined, um, those things, are minimally processed like our slow cooked oats, our bowl full of quinoa, our portion of brown rice, things like that, um, Cheerios, uh, that kind of stuff, all right? And what is our activity level And we're, when we're talking about the individual carb requirements? Are we sedentary? Are we sitting at a desk all day? Are we strength training or weight training? Are we actually being active? Are we working out two to three times a week or more? Are we an endurance athlete? Are we running ultra marathons? Are we, are we planning several half marathons in our future within the next year? Are we planning on um, you know, doing a bodybuilding show or a figure competition or possibly entering into our first powerlifting meet? All right, these things all ha are dependent upon what your, what your carb requirements and even your calorie requirements in general will be. Oh, goodness gracious. Just, it's very frustrating to hear these things. And it just, it's funny because it just goes to show you that no matter how much information is out there, and we preach about it all the time at Overdrive, there is such a lack of, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, people are just jumping always to the fear factor. Instead of asking questions, look it up, and there's good and bad information out there always. We're always here to help you. We talk about the basics, and if you wanna get more into it, please contact me. Contact us at Overdrive, and we'll figure out what the best solution is for you. But the research does show that the, um, if you were to take blood work, if you were to start introducing these healthy carbs 
and being really mindful about it, tracking, measuring, and observing the changes in your body, how you feel, performance, your energy level, your mood. The research does show in blood work and in um, just, just um, actually registering and collecting that data that you do increase your performance. Your reps do go up. You can actually last longer in your training. Your mood is elevated. You feel better in your body. Most of the time you're sleeping better, right? Throughout the day you have that energy to, to tackle what you need to tackle. So within that 24 hour period, it's all there in the research, guys. You, you actually have to look it up and you have to ask the questions, all right? When we talk about, quote unquote, that low carb dieter who starts to enter in more of a strength training regimen, you ain't gonna last in here. You need to eat those carbs. You need to eat the oatmeal. You need to eat the rice. You need to eat the cereals. Life is what it is. We want to introduce other things once in a while. Sure, that's psychologically how we prevail. But in general, we need to get our fruits and vegetables in. Uh, we need to get our oats. We need to get our breads in. We need to get our cereals in. We need to get our potatoes in. We need those carbs. Your body is going to store that in the form of glycogen. That's your fuel. I'm going to keep repeating it. The pumps are there, all you guys out there too, and even ladies, all you ladies who don't wanna eat carbs, you're gonna look flat, flat, flat as a board. Your muscles will not show. You're gonna look skinny fat. I wanna stay as far away from those two words as possible. I like to look full in my muscle. I like to have shape in my body. I like to look feminine and curvy. And without that, uh, you can't get that tone look unless you do have unless you can get that pump. Uh, so all the more reason to, to have carbs in your diet. And as, I, I, I don't even like saying the word tone, but that is really what people mean when they say they want to tone up, mm -hmm. you know? We don't use that word here. No. We, we do, do not use that word here. Um, but we want to, what the research does show is that when you start to introduce those healthy carbs, excuse me, into your body, and it's within what's appropriate for you. And again, if you need someone to guide you through that, we're here. But it, it shows you, excuse me, it doesn't show you, but the research does show that people not only lost weight, became leaner and more vascular in their workouts. That's what we want. We want to be able to perform that extra set or two. We want to be able to last longer in our training. More, right? So lasting longer in the training, mm -hmm. right? is gonna equal more of a calorie burn, correct? Yep. Which will equal a leaner physique, right? So look good, feel good. Feel good, play good. When they play good, they pay good. Hey. And when they pay good, you die good. Hey. I think right. uh, that was Gandhi <laughs> that said that, right? <laughs> exactly. Or was it Deion was Sanders? Saying, mm. It was definitely Gandhi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so I want you guys to start being mindful of what you're taking in, okay? Eat your carbs. Track, measure, and observe how you are feeling, okay? Watch everything shoot through the roof, all the positives, all right? Cholesterol goes down. The research is there. It's there, guys. Triglycerides, all that stuff. Try to combine, food combining in the sense of getting your proteins, your carbs, your fats, and your vegetables in each of your main meals. Get your proteins, your carbs, and your fats, and your snacks. And if there's veggies there, A plus to you. You get bonus points for that, all right? Think about what you are bringing into your body. It is your principal source of fuel and energy. I can't say that enough. I am tired of hearing, especially the women, it's such an ignorant statement because there's a lack of knowledge there, but you don't want to ask the questions. Ask the questions. We walk our talk here. You guys don't see what we look like under our clothes. In the summertime, you will see. We know our shit. We know our shit. I can't, take, I can't say it enough that I am small, but I am solid, solid under these clothes. I can lift with the boys. The boys can lift with me. I can hang. Rack two is my spot, right, Teddy? Yep. I know what I need to do to fuel myself, to get myself through my workouts, and carbs are a very important part of that. I want to look good. I want to feel good all the time. And we stress our bodies. We own this business. We work hard. We're here every day. 
We're here for every one of our athletes and our members, and we can't preach that enough. You gotta get your carbs in. Carbs are what hydrate you too. They keep you hydrated, guys. They keep you looking fuller. We want that nice, curvy look, ladies. And gentlemen, too. Gentlemen, if you wanna continue to look skinny fat, ladies and gentlemen, just continue to just eat your fats, which have its own importance and place in, the, in your daily, too. But you wanna just get your proteins and your, and your fats in? Okay, cool. You wanna eat a shit ton of, of butter and coconut oil and sausage and really fatty meats? Okay, cool. But you can't strength train. You're not gonna be able to last. You might get four or five reps in, six, seven, eight. Oh, but what if we have to do 10 to 15 reps? We have to be mindful and think smart about what the plan is and what you're doing. Wouldn't you, excuse me, wouldn't you agree, boo? Yeah, totally beta male move to not eat carbs. I mean, I'm pretty sure our founding fathers had it in the plan for America to include complex carbs and lots of bacon in their diets. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, like, what's the point of rocking the red, white, and blue? Am I right? <laughs> I think I got that all out. Feel good? It, it, it feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. Right? So we're getting it. Uh, we got over everything, right? Well, I mean. I think I made my point. And speaking about, uh, you know, eradicating uh, just these myths of carbs and, uh, you know, how they're just hearing these bullshit statements that are completely perturbing our lives. Uh, let's talk about um, Pest MD to this week's sponsor. Yeah, yeah. yeah so if, um, yes. you know, it, Pest MD is, if you're in the Rockland County, Burton County, Westchester, and even Connecticut, in the lo basically a local tri state area, um, and you have what you may think is a, a pest problem, so we're talking any type of insect bug um you know some of you, some of you people especially in rockland may have a camel cricket issue a spider cricket you know those things are fucking humongous they're disgusting and they multiply like stink exponentially bugs? stink bugs yeah. uh if you have a rodent problem okay so you know squirrels and um i guess uh if you even wanted you could throw in like field mice Really, anything, right? And, and even what about um, those beautiful creatures? Like, oh, maybe rabbits or, or I mean, the yeah. rodent, I know they're all in the rodent family, squirrels, things like that, that need to be healthfully and uh, positively and mindfully relocated. Yes. Right? Humanely. Mm -hmm. Humanely and um, mindfully relocated. Yeah, so if you have any of those issues in your home or business, then... Uh, Call Pest MD. All right, um, they will give you a free estimate when you mention uh, Overdrive AF or the Overdrive Fitness or the Overdrive Fitness podcast. If you mention Overdrive AF, you will get a free estimate from Mike. Uh, Pest MD can be reached at eight four five eight two five seven two five four to see exactly what Pest MD has done and can do. Just go to their Instagram at, at Pest MD, P E S T M D, and you'll see the the plethora of um, if I guess animals and insects and all that bullshit removed from people's homes and businesses. All right, um, I mean they're great. You know, uh, <laughs> I'm allergic to bees. Um, you know, just like I have an allergic reaction to iron because when I come into contact with either or, it makes me swole. Swole. Um, so, yeah, no, but on a serious note, um, Past MD is run by Mike. Um, some people call him the Hebrew Hammer. And, uh, you know, like he always says, if they ain't paying rent, they got to go. So, you know, roaches, whatever the fuck you, you think you may have a problem with or you definitely know, they'll come, come in. And very cleanly, humanely, exterminate, eradicate, relocate, and terminate. I couldn't think of anything else that rhymed. Uh, so yeah, hit up Pest MD. Give it there. Let's give his number one more time. 
at 845-825-7254. We'll throw more information on how to get a hold of them in the show notes. All right. So uh, bringing it back to the podcast, the Weekday Warrior highlight. So let's highlight another Weekday Warrior this week. Who do you have in mind? We are going to highlight the one and only David Seltzer. David! (laughs) Oh, gosh. I started training David eight or nine years ago, I think. Eight or nine years ago, and then we slowly embarked on our journey of, you know, and getting overdrive to where it is today. So uh, David reached out again, found us, and from there, um, we've we came together. He had some very specific uh, things that he wanted to do for himself, and we've been working on that. So for the past eight weeks, specifically, I'm going to go specifically. Uh, David went from before he started back here at Overdrive and training uh, with us the way we train here, he was doing just a lot of running and a lot of either body weight or band work. So first thing in mind that he had was to get ripped. He wanted to get ripped. And David is another very determined, very focused, very eye on the prize individual. You tell him what to do and he does it. He asks the questions. He he you know, he asks the questions. He he uh, he he does what is expected of him. And that's every single day, 6 days a week. Sometimes twice a day. David wanted to get ripped. He wanted to get shredded. And he has long-term goals. He has very specific things that he wants to do, and we're going to do those things. Everything has its step in its place. So I'm very proud of him so far. He's busted his butt. He's started at about 152 and only lost within this time. Maybe this is about 147 now. 11.9% body fat. He started 14.7 and he is down almost 3% and he's hardly lost any weight. I mean, the cuts are in, the strength is up through the roof as it should be when you do things properly. Uh, I have to give props to David uh, this week and Teddy and I both because He put his eye on the prize and he has not looked back once. Um, And ladies and gentlemen, he eats a shit ton of carbs. Appropriately placed, of course. Everything is done specific to the goal at hand. And we work together one-on-one within these past eight weeks, but David knows what he needs to do. He's gotten to where he needs to be, where he wants to be, and we have other other goals now um, that that he wants to tackle. So, David Seltzer, I am giving you five gold stars this week. You are again just like Rich and uh, and actually David. I'm going to tell this story real quick. David and Rich are very similar. Heights, similar builds in the sense that David was coming in the same at the same way Rich did, and uh, David turned to me and said, "Yo, gee, you see Rich? I want to look like that." And I was like, "Okay, let's do it." And he's on his way. He's already on his way. Um, and Rich came in just about the same. I'd say just about the same as David uh, when he came in about how many weeks ago, uh, well, several months ago, but how many weeks ago now we, we started on this journey. And uh, again, I'm proud of him. He's, uh, he's done it. He's really done it. And this is just the beginning. So for all of you who have questions uh, as to what it takes, speak to David, speak to Rich, speak to our members of Overdrive. And Within the walls of Overdrive, all you Overdrive members and Overdrive athletes who see the hard work that's being put in, ask them 
what they've done. Come and speak to us because we're here to help you. You have a goal, you have a specific that you wanna, that you wanna hit, let's do it. Let's do it the right way. And there's plenty of carbs that come with it, let me tell you. There's plenty of foods, calories, things like that. You got a goal, you got a specific, let's do it. You wanna say anything about David? Yeah, uh, I, I'd just like to really congratulate David on all his hard work. Uh, he's showing up every day, putting in a, a lot of work. He's focused from the second he gets here to when he leaves. Um, it's not so much focus in a sense to where um, it's such extreme tunnel vision and uh, he's ignoring everybody around him. He comes in, works out, has a great time. So talk about an extreme release of endorphins uh, and feeling good about every minute that he spends here, um, joking around, having a good time, but you know, really pushing the weight and, and the intensity. Um, and as far as intensity, not meaning just the bar load, but uh, you know, his, his effort, it's high effort. Um, you know, it's, it's very healthy what he's doing because you know, as we talk throughout the workouts in here too, he's not shy about it. He, he does have a life outside of working out. He's not obsessed with working out to the point where he's like, you know what? Gina only gave me 253 grams of carbs. I will not have 254. I will not have 252. I have to get that 253 or whatever number he's got. I have no fucking clue. But the point being is that, you know, it, uh, when you're achieving this, um, this great example of, of health, you know, when you want to have such a, a high standard for health, it's not just physical, right? It's also mental. There's no point in looking good if you actually feel like shit, if your mind is actual garbage because you're so obsessed with your fitness goals that you totally ignore your family and even your friends and, uh, and have no life outside of here. David does, I'm not going to say let himself go on the weekends, but he does not let life ruin, uh, knock him off track. And he also doesn't let fitness, uh, you know, stop him from having a life. So all around, just a great dude. Um, but, uh, you know, if you, David, when you're listening to this, uh, don't get gassed up because uh, I still want another bottle Coquito, all right? So uh, get the fuck on that or I will not spot you the next time you're benching heavy. That bar just may fall on your chest until I get another jar. PJ is going to keep dancing. <laughs> yes, a lot of uh, pelvic ostentations will be thrown his way. <laughs> all right, so um, I guess let's not also forget to mention... Um, you know, the six-week challenge, our next six-week challenge, Transformation Challenge 5, a a a.k.a. TC5, is coming up beginning January 27th. Um, the overall registration closes at noon, Monday or Tuesday, January 21st, all right? Remember, it is a team challenge. It's not an individual. It's not a partner. It's a team. Teams of three, all right? Uh, any more information that you want on the challenge and how you can be one of our many success stories in, in achieving uh, a, an awesome weight loss and fat loss in your life, then um, you know, email us at info at overdrivefitnessny.com. Put in the subject line, Transformation Challenge, and tell us that you're interested. All right? Mention that you're interested, uh, if you have any teammates, you know, and then we'll take it from there. Uh, I'll reach out to you or Gina reach out to you and we'll get you in here for your initial consultation or as we call it a strategy ses session in which we'll go over um, a roadmap on how many sessions you'll need to reach your goal based around uh, your, your life, you know, ideally how many you can get in here. We're not going to tell you to get in here eight times a week if you just don't have that time, all right? We can make things happen in two sessions a week if that's all that you have, all right? Um, Today, when we're recording this, Monday, January 13th, was the, is the final day for anybody to um, sign up, which means not just tell us that you're in it, but pay, reserve your spot, and um, get customized uh, menus for the six-week challenge. Um, after that, that's it. You're out of it, right? We, we don't just give out 
random bullshit menus. You know, you get tailor-made custom menus to made for you, which, you know, in order for that to happen, Gina needs time to set those up. Um, if you're looking for just macros, we can do that too, but the deadline for that is January 17th. So you, there's a couple more days left for that, and then once that's done, again, that's closed too. So overall, just get in here by January 21st at noon to sign up for your, uh, your challenge, okay? Uh, or for, sign up for the challenge. Uh, any takeaways or closing remarks? Well, let's start with you. Um, with the sports performance topic, what, what, what's the takeaway there? Split squat iso hold. Remember, one of the easiest ways to improve uh, ankle mobility, um, you know, at the, let alone joint stability and uh, strength throughout that position. Uh, you know, give it a shot. By the time you guys hear this episode, uh, some of you already have seen it. It'll be this week's Movement Monday exercise. Um, and those that haven't, just make sure you shoot over to Instagram at ODFitnessNY to see uh, exactly what I'm talking about. Remodel that tissue. Remodel it. And carbs. Carbs. Are good for you. Great for you. Excellent. They're a drug. Do not fear them. Do drugs. Okay, maybe don't do drugs. Everything turns into sugar. So eat your carbs, ladies and gentlemen. I'm being nice. Take them in. Your oats, your rice, your quinoa, your pastas, your cereals, get it all in. You want energy, you want to look good, you want to, but do it right. So eat your carbs. Train harder but smarter. Last longer in your workouts. Look better, feel better. Period. End of story. <laughs> and uh, since we're recording this on Monday, the 13th of January, um, who's your pick tonight for the college football national championship? Do you have Clemson or LSU? Um, uh, there's been a lot of upsets in like everything lately. Mm -hmm. So you can go with the upset of Clemson mm -hmm. number three knocking off number one LSU. But is Did that really an fight recently? What's up? Did Clemson start the fight recently? Oh, that bowl game? That was the Kentucky game. Oh. Yeah, the quarterback uh, oh. punched a guy in the face more than an hour before the game, so he wasn't ejected to start the game. I don't know. Talk about knowing the I'm rules. I don't know. I, f I feel like the favorite is LSU, right? Yes, but also the Clemson quarterback has an. He's only he's seventy seven and two I think in the last six years of football. I know football. I think I'm leaning towards Clemson. Going for Clemson because they're orange. I LSU's got some purple in there. You're, I know, you're, and I you love purple. I just feel like there's been so many upsets lately with everything. I love Ed or Orgeron, Coach O. Um, he's the head coach of LSU. Um, big Jamal Adams fan who went to LSU also. The Honey Badger. Tyron Matthew went to LSU, DBU. Um, and Ed O also, he was an assistant coach at Syracuse back in the day. So me being um, a, a fellow Orangeman, well, I guess Syracuse dropout, I'm going to have to go with the Syracuse connection, LSU. Give him a call right now. Give him a call on my shot right now. LSU is taking down Clemson tonight. Okay, so we... Is it going to be a blowout or a close game? <laughs> I'm telling you, there's going to be an upset. It's going to be an upset, and that's all I'm going to say. It's going to come down to whoever ate the most carbs all before I'm the game, say, right? You know those boys eat carbs. Yes. You know they do. So, and you know they train smart, for the most part, and they eat their carbs. Oh, they definitely both Unless have. Unless you have a medical condition and your doctor is advising something specific for you, eat your carbs. Hydrate. Keep yourself hydrated. Keep yourself looking full. Be stronger, have more energy, boom. Boom, son. So that, that's it for this week's episode of Overdrive AF, episode four. Uh, tune in next week, and uh, we'll catch you guys uh, next time. Thank you. Don't up gang signs like a typical white chick. People watch this. We're trying to, you know. Where you from, blood? No blood.